What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Park to Prem here with Town or Town. Today is episode 64 and we're not leaving. No, we're here for the long haul. I've made the commitment. I've made the decision. I've already uploaded a video at the exact same time as this one. Um, just talking about the Swansea Town Hall decision, how I came to it, why I decided not to leave. I did kind of acknowledge it in this video, but to acknowledge it again, I am quite sick. You might be able to hear my voice is not particularly good today. So for those of you who feel like episodes have been getting too long and I've been talking too much recently, you're in luck because I am going to intentionally keep this one fairly short. I will apologise. I was originally going to do a live com double header today, but I just need to get the video out. I need to get the video done. And I don't know if my voice would last two games. So yes, if there's any weird cuts, it's where I started coughing or just dying, dying silently in the background, I guess, and I'm just drinking water. So... Bear with me today, folks. I'm fragile. But yes, we are still here at Tau Law. And when I left things last episode, we talked about the fact that at Tau Law, things have been a bit of a struggle. We took on Man City, of course, in the last episode with Tau Law. And, uh, well, from there, you can see kind of a mixed bag. We just couldn't buy ourselves a win in the league. We went eight games in the league without winning. Um, draws against Bristol Rovers, 0-0. A draw against Crawley, 1-1. Losing to Coventry was disappointing. We then started scoring, but we still couldn't get over drawing. 2-2 Two -two draws against Shrewsbury and Luton and away from home. Not necessarily the worst results in the world. And then you can see in our last two games, two wins to our name. A 3-2 win against Bradford was a really, really good one. I'll show the highlights for this game. Um, there were some really, really high quality goals to get us the wins in these two most recent games. Um, and it, they're against two of the teams who are quite high in the league and in and around us, particularly the MK Dons win, which followed this one. And, uh, well, this game was a battle. It went all the way down to the end. They actually scored, as you can see, in the 85th minute. And I thought at that point, well, it's 2-2. We've not won in a long time. Let's just go very attacking and try and get a league win. And, well, a minute after my brave, if not rash, decision was made, we went and scored to make it 3-2. Jack Pedu with a nice little finish into the top corner. And following on from that, another high-scoring game. Yes, we've forgotten the three nil-nils in a row and decided, screw defending, let's just attack a ton. And, well, we did that again here against MK. Um, good result, this one. DKM got us off to a flyer. Uh, they then equalised in the 44th minute just before half-time. And it remained 1-1 until the 74th minute. But then there was an explosion of goals. And Leighton Stewart's goal, I think, was the pick of the bunch. What a run this was by him dribbling all the way through the defense tucking it in and uh, from there we grabbed a few more for good measure um, unfortunately with these two wins we've had two very significant injuries to two very significant first team players um, so there is going to be some opportunities perhaps for other players um, yeah the, the wins that we got the first two wins in well eight games eight games without winning the, in the league is shocking it came as a cost as I've already mentioned Andre Dezel is out for a while. He's out for between six weeks and three months. That is a pretty killer injury for him, a dislocated shoulder. We've sent him to a specialist to hopefully prevent it being a repeat. And Zach Gannon, I've talked forever about the fact he's injury prone, about the fact I'm scared about it. He's now broken his foot. He's out for three to four months. So um, that's a problem. It does mean that the loney from Manchester United, though, Joseph Speed, he's going to get a chance to show us what he's all about. He himself is injury prone, which is... Slightly scary, but he does look like a very, very good player, to me at least, for this level. So hopefully he is going to be the man to come in and fill a void in the team. He's slightly unproven, although in the five games he's played, he's done well. I realise that with this run of fixtures, I haven't really talked about the cup games, but uh, we won in the EFL Trophy, um, which was a good result against Macclesfield, and we've also won in the first two rounds of the FA Cup. And in the third round, we've been drawn against Coventry. Um, Coventry are a good team. But given how the league season's going, their fifth in League One, it's not the most exciting, I feel like, of FA Cup ties. I would like us to try and beat them and play one of the big boys, but if we lose to them, I'm not going to lose sleep. I really feel like now the focus has to be on the league. And we've got a huge game today. Um, we're going to be taking on Charlton. They are 15 points ahead of us. They are top of the league still by quite a comfortable margin. You can see that despite our horrific run of form, because we've only lost three games all year, we're still actually in quite a good league position. Um, we currently sit in sixth place with 20 games played. If we could win our game in hand, we have an opportunity to leapfrog a few sides, including MK Dons, who we beat most recently. Recently. However, we are taking on Charlton today who have lost two all season 
And that is not going to be an easy game, really. We are at the start of December as well. I have been looking at players to bring in and possible signings and such, but it's still kind of all up in the air. Of course, we've got a load of players joining us in the not-so-distant future. One new name for this list, actually, is Scott Ferguson. Uh, his contract was expiring with Hibs at the end of the year because in Scotland, the contracts end at the end of May. I approached to sign him at the start of this month, and at 18 years old, I feel like he looks like an okay little punt for the future. You know, a free transfer, nothing to lose with him, comes in for a few hundred pounds a week. Um, if he turns out to be incredible, fantastic. If he doesn't, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. You can see here, Dimitri Yu as well, who we sold to Lil, the centre mid. He's starting to play a few more games for Canada, which is good. We actually have the opportunity to sell on his sell-on clause for £700,000. We will get 50% of any future sale of this guy. Um, I don't intend to um, cash in on that fee unless it was to increase significantly, because I feel like he will probably end up transferring... For significantly more than £1.4 million, or at least that's the hope. I mean, I would like to believe that in two years' time, we'll be slogging out in the championship and suddenly £10 million will fall from the heavens as this guy's been plucked up by PSG. Uh, if anyone from PSG is watching, feel free to go and sign him for me, please. That would, that would help me out massively. Anyway, we have got those injuries that I talked about, so that does mean that alongside Joseph Speed, we're going to give Keith Kelly Evans a chance in the centre of the midfield. He doesn't actually come in as a result of injuries, but more so because Liam Coyle's been very poor. I'm going to give Shuttleworth the nod ahead of Boxall uh, with the injury. Boxall was injured earlier on in the year. Shuttleworth came in and did a really good job at centre mid. You can see a 7.6 average rating. So I'll hope that he can do something similar for us today. This game against Charlton is quite significant. It is one of our games in hand. In fact, I say one of our games in hand because we've had games in hand for a long time. This is the game in hand. Um, if we could win here, three wins on the bounce. You know, we will have beaten MK Dons. We will have beaten Bradford. We will have beaten Charlton. A few teams around us and I will feel like we've turned a corner in our season. Um, you might be wondering, have I made any changes? just off the back of this run of form and the answer is I haven't I, I genuinely felt like we were just getting extremely extremely unlucky I didn't want to panic and make any rash changes we know through well proof that our tactic can work I feel like a few players just weren't quite performing but I feel like we've turned a corner now and hopefully we're going to see that today you can see a few players struggling a little bit for fitness I'm going to bring in Benny and Kololo at center attacking mid for CC um, just because he's chipped him with a few goals and actually you know what I'm tempted to bring in Purdue as well, ahead of um, ahead of uh, Jacob, sorry, out on the right-hand side, just because Purdue, yes, he's right-footed, it's not ideal, obviously, when he's playing out on the right as an inside forward, but between these three attacking midfielders, we've had some really good form, and I'm hoping that they're going to show us more of that today. If anything, I would say that's been the biggest factor in this change of form, actually, is that we went through this period where we were struggling to score, we were struggling defensively, and I can't really attribute that to the defence or the attack. I feel like so much of that was actually down to our midfield, just not pulling their fingers out, just not performing well. I had a lot of stern words with them, criticising recent form. It feels like they finally started to pick up. And uh, yeah, hopefully now we can go into this game against Charlton and get a win. Okay guys, so after a little bit of a delay in FM, a strepsil, some water and a coffin fit, we're back for the game. Let's see if we can get a result here. I'm hoping this is going to be a nice clinical 1-0. Uh, I will warn you guys, and I'm sure it's kind of obvious, there may not be an episode over the weekend if I'm still feeling this unwell. Um, additionally, Football Manager is kind of my escape to sanity when I'm ill and I can be stuck in bed for a, you know days at a time. I have been resting so much. So I might need the rest, but I might also play quite a bit between this episode and next episode. So warning for you, we might come back next episode and I'll be feeling right as rain and I will be a month or two in the future just because I feel like when... I mean, maybe this is just me. I find that sometimes with Football Manager, I can just sit and play and play and play and play and play and suddenly like I've played two months in game in a single sitting. Either way, Charlton are going to make sure that we don't turn the corner this year. They've got a goal ahead, everyone. Steve Waters with it. Tucked into the bottom corner. He doesn't care about the fact I'm sick, does he? He's not giving me any sympathy. Football manager doesn't care. Football manager's a relentless beast. I make it, it sound like it's some kind of sentient being and it knows that I'm struggling. Anyway, they've taken the lead in this game. I'm going to get shouty-shouty, or at least as shouty-shouty as I can get. 
maybe it would be aggressive interpretive dance or something that I would be doing at the players from the sideline in this situation because I don't think I have the capabilities to shout. Anyway, I'm showing myself far too much pity, so let's continue to focus on this game, and it's a game where actually, stat-wise, we're in a better spot than them. We've done way more than them. We're just a goal down, which unfortunately is the stat that really matters. They are calling us into some defensive action here as well. Charlton, of course, only lost two games this year. We've only lost three games this year of ourselves, so we're tr proving tricky to beat. Um, maybe we can make something happen here as Benny marauds forward, lays it back to DKM. He's singing in the rain, gives it to Shuttleworth, gives it to Manpal, a lovely build-up play, the effort blocked away, but only as far as Kelly Evans. Now with Norris out on the left, can he get a ball of quality in? He whips it, and Colo lows there, and, well, he, he headed Enkai high, high over the crossbar. That was That was terrible. That would, I'm sorry, everyone. Right, public apology, that is unacceptable puns. It's 1-0 at the break. This is not good enough. Of course, um, even a defeat here wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world. We would still be, I think, in the playoffs, if not within a point or two or even goal difference of it. I think Leighton Orient, who are also playing today, I, I can't remember if it's Leighton Orient. There is a team behind us who have the opportunity to leapfrog us if we slip up. The fact it's only 1-0 with 25 minutes left does give me some hope. I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to bring in CC at centre attacking mid. I'm going to take off Purdue for Jacobs. I feel like we've been lacking a little bit of creativity in this game. I said I wanted a nil. On nil. I wanted it in our favour. And uh, well, we need to defend here. Embleton heads it out to DKM. Can we launch some kind of breakaway here? Charlton committing plenty of men to the attack. Goes to Mampala. Lovely touch to get it out of his feet. Options queuing up in the box. Whipped in. Jacobs looked offside. He hit it wide anyway. He wasn't offside either. It would have countered. One of the best chances of the game so far. It's come to the play we've brought on, on off the bench. For a second, I thought I was going to be patting myself on the back for a superb decision. But alas, it was not meant to be. And now we need to defend. Pierce with a poor pass back to him that's going to put him on the back foot. Does get it back to their keeper though now in Jarvis. I do like that purple goalkeeper kit. Is that is that an obscure thing? I ju it just looks good. Anyway, we need we need to defend things here. They're on the attack, Charlton. They're in possession. We're trying to win the ball up high. They dink it forward. Speed on his live com debut, if I'm not mistaken, with a good header. Now with Mampalo, who needs to hold it up if he can, or he can go alone. What dribbling this is, oh my word, if he had finished that, what an incredible goal it would have been. Unfortunately, he was denied. Now with DKM, he whips in Jacobs. What is happening? All the highlights feel like they're going in our favour right now. Shuttleworth with the ball back to Kelly Evans. He switches it over. Norris now with it. What can he do? The ginger ninja at left back squares it to DKM. Who hits it? It's saved wide and falls to Jacobs with the banana boots. He's doing the... I don't know what that celebration is. It's questionable at best. He goes to celebrate with the Towel or Ultras. It's 1-1, and you'd have to say on the balance of play, we deserve this, and you'd almost back us to now go and get another. Fourth in the league as well with this goal. It could prove huge for us. I thought the chance had gone when DKM's effort was saved, but it fell mercifully to Jacobs, who tucks it away, makes it 1-1. I'm going to get a bit more shouty shouty. Try and get the players focused. Five minutes left. You know what? I'm going I'm going for the jugular. Let's get very attacking. Three minutes left is probably not going to result in anything. And, well, we have to take a share of the spoils. But you know what? After an atrocious run of form against the best team in this league by a country mile, 1-1 one -one doesn't feel like that bad a result in the grand scheme of things. You can see Leighton Orient drew their game against Crawley um, if we had drawn and they had won. Oh, sorry, if we had lost and they had won, um, they would have gone ahead of us, I think, on goal difference, potentially. Um, but as things stood, that they didn't win, and now everyone's played a similar number of games. Ebsfleet, a little bit of an exception to the rule, in fifth place. Of course, we've got a few good results as of late. We'll hope to turn it into more wins and less draws. Only three points away from Northampton now, so suddenly... You kind of look over at one of the teams ahead of us and go, you know what, maybe we could do something here. Anyway, in terms of when we'll be back, as I said, we're in the FA Cup third round, but it's not a glamorous tie. We may come back for the game against Northampton at the end of January. That would give me a couple of months to play uh, using Steam Link on my tablet whilst in bed. I'll, I'll wait and see. But either way, folks, just as a heads up again, reminder, I know some people skip through games. Um, there may not be an episode for the next few days while I focus on getting better. 
But anyway, that was a good result. I'm sorry for the fact it's a bit of a short and sweet episode, but I just want to keep looking after myself. I'll hopefully see you guys again soon. If you've got any ideas for what we could do in January, I'm thinking I might go and spend a lot of money in January. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I don't want to say it too soon. There's money, there's money to be spent, though, so don't be surprised if next episode you come back and everything's changed. But, well, that, that's for future Jack to worry about and future you to look forward to. Right, enough rambling, enough talking. I'm going back to bed. I'll see you again soon. It's me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.